finally a new video <laughs> this video is my pregnancy week 35 update it's a q a video and as you can hear it's in english because it will be me talking only in this video so it would take forever to write subtitles for it but luckily my swedish viewers they understand english um not so lucky is that I am very boring in, in English, but whatever, let's do it! So you guys sent me a lot of questions on... <sighs> it's hot. So you guys sent me a lot of questions on my Instagram and I have gathered the most frequently asked questions to answer here today. Okay, so the questions are about uh, pregnancy, birth, mom life, relationship, all that. Um, and you guys sent me so many good questions, so it's actually a bit hard for me to choose a few. Okay, let's start. Okay, so many of you are asking, do you want more kids after little brother comes out? And yes, we want more kids. And yes, we want more kids after this. Um, we always wanted a big family. So if we can get a number three and maybe a number four, that would be amazing. But I am also very grateful that we even got one kid, two kids. Uh, so we'll see about that. Many of you are also asking like, are you going to try for another baby um, this soon? Again, uh, Nicola was only one year old when I got pregnant with his baby brother. Yeah, so you wonder like, are you gonna try that fast again because of my situation with my uh, low ovarian reserve? And my feeling now is that I've been pregnant for the last four years. I was pregnant half of 2018, half of 2019, half of 2020, and half of 2021, something like that. Um, and I feel that I need a little break. We'll see. I also really want more kids, so it's like a bit hard to decide that now. We'll see how everything goes and how everything feels after this baby comes out. Did you think this baby was a girl or a boy? And what did Alex think? I thought it was a girl and Alex thought it was a boy. And it was a boy. <laughs> Would you be sad or feel like you're missing out if you never got a daughter? I wouldn't say I would be sad because I mean, we went from not expecting any kids when we got my uh, the news about my um, fertility to having two kids. Uh, that is amazing and I couldn't be more grateful. So I wouldn't be sad if we never got a daughter. I mean, if we get a third boy, that is also amazing. But yes, I would feel like I would be missing out a little bit on like the mother-daughter relationship. Yeah. It is what it is, so if we get more boys or if we don't get any kids at all, at all, <laughs> any more kids at all, that is also totally fine. How do you compare your second pregnancy to your first? Like differences and similarities. Um, I would say they have been pretty much the same. In the beginning, I had morning sickness like I did with uh, in my first pregnancy, but not as bad as with Nicola. So I think I threw up like three times total, four maybe. And with Nicola, it was every single day. So that was a big difference in the beginning, which I'm very grateful for because it would have been really tough to take care of Nicola and um, throw up all the time. Uh, I did feel nauseous a lot though, but to me like nau nausea was fine, throwing up that would not have been fine. Other than that I would say they have been uh, pretty much the same. I feel the same in my body, it's not like any more or less pain or anything like that. Um, it has been a bit tougher on me mentally this time, which is not so weird since I I have been a bit more like exhausted this time since I've been taking care of Nicola every day and I also had a bit more I don't know it was harder to connect to the baby this time like with Nicola I felt that 
I felt this huge love and connection right away when I got that positive pregnancy test and I didn't this time which also made me feel a lot of guilt like why am I not feeling the same this time but apparently it's very common to feel that in your second or third pregnancy and also because you are so busy with the kid that's already on the outside so I've tried not to be so hard on me when it comes to this. I know that I will love this baby as much as I love Nicola, um, but it might just take a bit longer this time. Is your belly this pregnancy bigger than with your first? Yes, I would say that it has been like since very early, it has been three to four weeks bigger um, than last time. So when I was in week 15 it was like last pregnancy in week 19 etc so now in week 36 i have to say no 35 sorry i have to say um yeah i am like i was in week 38 39 last time so here is the bump update here it is that of course has been a bit hard <laughs> especially um, when trying to pick up the dog poop and trying to put on Nicola his clothes and he's like refusing and screaming um, but yeah it's not many weeks left so it will probably get even bigger bigger and bigger did you get stretch marks and do they fade after pregnancy? Both with Nicola and this uh, pregnancy, I didn't get any stretch marks on the belly. However, or I do got on the belly, but I got like my old piercing, um, piercing hole. <laughs> I had a belly button piercing when I was younger. That kind of stretched out and it looks like it's like two small stretch marks going there so I got stretch marks there and on my ass which is weird because my ass is only getting smaller was it easier for you to get pregnant for your second pregnancy yes it was it only took five tries this time I got pregnant on the second round with hormones so yes much easier this time how much weight did you gain in this pregnancy and your previous pregnancy okay so this question is asked a lot like all the time I get them in my DMs all the time and I'm not gonna answer it because I think it's um, it's a sensitive topic and it's so unnecessary to talk about it and I'm gonna tell you why because each pregnancy is different uh, each body is different and the weight gain has nothing to do with anything like you can gain a lot of weight even though you're like taking care of your diet and you can gain no weight even though you are not taking care of your diet and eating donuts every day so it's like it, it there's no point in knowing how much other people other women gain because we are all different so i'm not going to answer that question because it can trigger people and i just feel that it's it's not it's not relevant you know let's do some birth questions uh, are you going for a natural birth again? I'm not sure what you mean with natural because some people say that natural birth is like when you don't take any like epidural or stuff like that and some people mean that natural is like yeah it's either natural or c-section um, I I'm gonna do a va vaginal <laughs> vaginal birth again like I did last time uh, and hopefully with a lot of pain relief and uh, I've talked about this on my Instagram that I am a bit scared that it will go too fast this time so that I won't make it, make it to the hospital in time for my epidural but yeah I'm like open for all kind of pain relief because it hurts a lot to give birth and I'm like, why not take the epidural? What, uh, epidural? Why not take the epidural? Why not try like everything? 
uh, but everyone is different that's just the way I feel but I'm gonna try for a vaginal birth again and I'm hopefully I will get the epidural in time um, I've also uh, read a bit about other pain reliefs that I didn't know of last time. There is one uh, like called, in Swedish at least, spinal. It's something, it's like an epidural, but it's only like a one-time shot, so they don't put uh, the thing in your back that where they can do the refill, you know. Um, but you can get the shot and it lasts for about one to two hours. Uh, so that is an option if it, there is no time to do like the real epidural and then there is also one pain relief um, shot that makes it a bit more numb in the JJ uh, when the baby is about to slide out slide out <laughs> um, I'm not sure what it's called in English but in Swedish it's called like a bäckenbottenbedövning i kryssningsskedet something like that so I'm also going to ask if it's possible to get that one. I heard that the negative negative thing about that one can be that you get too numb and you can't feel like how to push. But um, since I've given birth before, I think I know how to push. Um, so we'll see. I'm trying not to have like too much planned this time because either way, it can, yeah, it can go like not as planned. But those are my plans like please give me everything you can give me how do you prepare yourself for giving birth this time i wouldn't say i'm like preparing that much um i mean last time we did all the birth classes and i read the books and all that so i still got that like in the back of my head i remember how to like handle the contractions uh, with breathing and all that so i feel that i i got that and i've done this before i can do it again i'm just gonna go with the flow but then i have also decided some stuff that i'm not gonna sit on that birth stool again you know that chair that i sat on if you've seen my birth video i don't want to sit on that one again i want to be in the bed like laying on the side or laying on like like half sit up half laying down with my legs up like supported somehow uh, i can also try like um, uh, being on my knees and holding on to the bed if it's like upright hold on to the bed um yeah so i have some some ideas of what I don't want to do, like the birth stool, for example, and uh, we'll see. And since we have a child now, <laughs> this time, we have also prepared, like, at my mom's. So Nicola has his bed there, and he, yeah, we're gonna pack a little overnight bag for him. So if we don't know how this birth is going to start, if, it's, if I'm going to be induced again or if it's going to start by itself and go really fast. So we need to be prepared, like where's Nicola going to go, where is he going to sleep um, and all that. I'm a little bit worried about that one if my mom is at work and he's at preschool and yeah. Um, so if you have any ideas on how to think when it comes to the first child like where's he's gonna be how how are we gonna fix everything in time when we need to rush to the hospital please let me know okay are you scared of having your child during a pandemic no not really um to actually i haven't noticed like a bigger change except that um i have to go to the scans alone and except the private the one we paid for ourselves alex was allowed to come to that one uh, but other than that i haven't noticed like any difference and i am not scared um <laughs> i don't know if i should be um i trust the um, the healthcare in sweden how will covid affect your birth plus stay at the hospital here's one thing i am a bit worried about and that is um that alex will not be able to come with me to the hospital for 
the birth and that would be awful because here they the dads are not allowed to come if they are sick like if they have a cold or if they have covid obviously uh, they are not allowed and so in the end of my pregnancy we're gonna be a lot more isolated uh, we are already very isolated here but we will be much more isolated and careful so that we will not be sick when it's time or he will not be sick when it's time to go to uh, the hospital since this is my second child i don't think we will be would have been allowed to stay for the night even though if it wasn't for covid because i think they want you to go home if you've had like a birth with no com complications uh, when it's your second child um, so I'm not sure if we will even stay there one night or if they will send us home I hope that I will give birth late in the evening so that we can stay at least till to the morning because I thought it was so nice to be there the first day because my body was so sore and everything was so new and it felt like safe to get help from the professionals there. Are you worried about managing everything with two kids? Of course, I am worried about some situations like the sleeping situation, what we are gonna do if Nicola really wants me to comfort him at night and the baby is stuck at my boob, <laughs> for example. I'm a little bit worried about those situations. But I also know that some people have twins and some people have triplets and they manage to get through, so we will as well. How do you think Nicola will handle starting daycare and a new baby so close together? So Nicola has just started preschool and everything is going fine over there. Um, and he will have a couple of more weeks of adjustment to that until the baby comes. So. I am not worried that those things are too close to each other. If I'm worried about how he's going to react to a new baby, well, it wouldn't be fun if he started hitting the baby or stuff like that. But no, I'm not really worried because he is not the jealous type. Maybe he's a little bit too young. Maybe he is not in that phase yet. He will be... 20 and a half months at due date so maybe he is a little bit too young i don't think he understands really because he never he never gets jealous if i'm playing with another child or having another baby in my lap or anything like that he just doesn't bother um but we'll see maybe that changes why did you decide that nicola should start preschool now when you are going to be at home with the new baby um I guess the person means that like why don't have them both at home first of all I am not on maternity leave 100% I have never been on maternity leave since Nicola was born not 100% uh, I have been working part-time since the day he was born so for one year and seven months I have been handling my business and taking care of him at the same time it has been tough, uh, it was easier in the beginning and it, it got tougher and tougher the older he got but I have been able to manage it thanks to that Alex uh, has been flex flexible with his uh, schedule so he sometimes he took some days off to help, uh, to help, it's his child, to take care of Nicola so that I could work uh, and we've also had my mom who has been helping me taking Nicola out to the playground so that I could work for a little bit. It has been manageable uh, up until now. Now it has been too hard because he is a child that he needs a lot of stimulation and he is wild. I could have, I can have one kid at home while working part time. But I cannot have two kids at home while working part-time. I am not superwoman. Aren't you scared of like exposure to diseases like COVID, the RS virus, etc. at uh, preschool with a baby at home? Um, <laughs> I am not this ki the, the scared kind of person. Uh, maybe, maybe that is bad. I don't know. Um, but no, 
because uh, right now at the preschools the COVID situation is like if the kids are even the slightest like stuffed in the nose they get sent home so the kids at preschool are much more like healthy now than before the COVID situation uh, when parents left their kids there with a stuffy runny nose and coughing and all that I don't know, it feels kind of safe to to have Nicola there um, even though we have we will have a small baby at home because because of that rule that they send them home if they are like the slightest have the slightest symptom sim symptom we have decided that this is what is best for our family when it comes to preschool and um, working while uh, being on maternity leave and that is just this is the way for us um, and other parents and other families can do what they feel is best for them no need to shame anyone for deciding to leave their child at preschool while having another child at home like i said i am working as well how has uh, becoming parents affected your relationship like my relationship with alex i would say like this we are we have a stronger bond now than we did before we became a family and of course now we have a person nicola and soon a second person that means the most in the world for both of us and he is our number one priority and focus i say that you have to be okay with your relationship as you remember it being on pause for the first couple of years as parents and you have to be okay with that and accept that like you can't be the couple you were before you had children because you don't have that time you can't do whatever you want and and give each other 100 percent attention but also know that you will have to work to not i would not say find each other because you haven't lost each other but find that relationship you had before I don't know if you do you understand what I mean I, it's like your relationship changes and that's okay but don't forget each other and remember that you always have to work to to keep that spark between you guys uh, but it's hard the first couple of years are you worried that your relationship will change um, when having two babies um no I don't think it will be a bigger difference on our relationship uh, like one kid or two kid um, of course it we will have less uh, alone time like me time when we have two kids because one will probably always be busy with one child but I, I don't think it will affect our love relationship are you looking for a bigger apartment we were but we stopped <laughs> when we realized that the baby's coming soon we don't have time for this so we're gonna stay in this apartment and we might look for something after summer and another question with about alex and that is the name has he approved the name yet <laughs> he hasn't <laughs> he hasn't and the baby's coming soon and we have no idea what we're gonna name this baby so like I said, I have one name that I love, that I really want to name our child. But he's like, eh, and you will understand the reason um, afterwards when I explain the name and all that. But he's like hes hesitating. Um, and then we have two other names that he likes a bit more than the name I like. I like those names as well, but not as much. So we'll see. It's either going to be a name on S or a name on D. Speaking of names, are you thinking about a Moroccan slash Arabic name as well? Or only uh, a Slavic name as Nicola or a Swedish name? So we have been uh, both with... When I was pregnant with Nicola and with uh, this baby, we have been looking at both like Swedish names, Slavic name, Arabic names, international names, all that. And... Um, Nicola is a Slavic name and his 
Middle name uh, Moulay is Arabic. Um, this baby will not get a, a middle name. We don't think so. And it will probably be a Slavic name as Nikola because it suits with Nikola and it's suitable with uh, their last name, Subosic. Um, and um, it's nothing like I don't want Arabic name because Slavic names are better <laughs> or anything like that. But I can't find, I can't find a boy's name in Arabic that I like. I think girl's name, Arabic girl's name, there are many beautiful names, but boy's name too hard okay this turned out to be longer than expected i just can't keep track on time uh, i had so many more good questions maybe i'll save them for later uh, so a quick little pregnancy update i've already showed you my week 35 bump and the update is um about my um 35 weeks uh, pregnant uh, week is um, not much is happening um i've ordered some stuff now the stroller we got like a sibling stroller that you can also have as a single stroller is on the way about time and i also ordered uh some new clothes not that many since we have from nicola and some little stuff here and there I can show you in my next video because I'm actually waiting for that package. It's going to be delivered today, I think. Uh, so I can show that to you the next time. But other than that, I am just like trying to adjust to the whole preschool thing with Nicola now. And then I will have a couple of weeks where I can focus on work and also rest a little bit and prepare like a lot of work that needs to be done before birth so that I can take some time off when the baby comes. Wash all Nicolas old clothes, I'm gonna do that as well. And uh, then like mentally land in the whole thing that I'm gonna be a mom of two soon. And I mean, the weeks are passing by so fast, so the baby's here soon. But I'm gonna do a next, uh, my next video is gonna be next week, actually, I think. So I can show you the stuff there. And let me know if you want to see some other stuff in that video as well. So, got to go! Bye bye!